Welcome back. Yesterday we focused mainly on subject verb agreement. So today we're going to go over our homework, see how well you did on it, and then continue with issues with verbs. We'll take a quick look at parallelism or parallel structure and then move into everything we need to know about verb tense for the SAT. All right, so let's get started by going over your homework. So I want you to get out your Princeton Review book. And let's start with the homework on pages 430 and 431. All right, and let's begin with question number 14. And question number 14 is, when my sister and me visited the eulogized city of Troy. All right, we notice dot, dot, dot. I'm not going to read the whole question, but now we know what we're dealing with. So let's take a look at this. Now, every now and then some students want to say be, the word eulogized. The only reason they pick that is they don't know what the word means. That is not a good reason to pick an answer on the SAT. And our rule is going to be if you don't know what the word means, leave it alone and assume it's probably correct. Because the SAT writing is not a vocabulary test. All right? But keep in mind what I always stress, and that's pronouns and verbs, pronouns and verbs. And what's the first thing we see underlined here with A? We see a pronoun, me, right? Now, the only thing that the SAT might test with I or me is case. Later today, I'm going to give you a fuller lesson on case issues, but for now, let's check this one out. Would you say, if we take the sister out, would you say that me visited the city of Troy? Or would you say I visited the city of Troy? I think clearly we'd see that we need the subject case I here because I am doing that action of visiting Troy. Correct answer, A. Next one, number 15. Complete exhausted from a hard day at work, Evelyn fell asleep. All right, this one should be relatively easy for you. It's also one of the major things that I mentioned our first class. And what's the issue? Well, when we modify a verb like exhausted, what do we need? We need an adverb, right? And adverbs generally end in ly. So what's our answer to 15? Again, the answer is A, because of an adverb issue. All right, now let's flip over to the next page and question number 23. This involves things that I talked about yesterday as well as in our first lesson. The question says this, species of monkeys living among a variety of creatures come in contact with predators and prey alike as it swings through the trees. Now, what I taught you yesterday was to eliminate prepositional phrases to identify your true subject. And we have a verb underlined here, swings. We also have a pronoun paired with that verb which is it, right? Now, we need to identify our true subject. So let's kill off our prepositional phrases. The first prepositional phrase we see is of monkeys, right? So what are we going to do? We're going to eliminate that, right? So it's not the monkeys that are doing the swinging, but rather the species, right? Well, species don't swings. Species swing, because they're plural. Furthermore, we have another error in the underlined section, right? Because if species is plural, what is it? They. They swing. Okay? Now, it is conceivable that species could be singular, but only if we had A, the letter A, in front of it, denoting a singular collective entity. But here, it's discussing many species of monkeys, all right? So here we have a combination error. We have a pronoun number error, and that once we fix that, we get an SVA error, a subject verb agreement error. All right, so 23 highlighted what we talked about yesterday, as well as something that I mentioned from the first day, and that we'll get into a few lessons from now. Next question, right after that, number 24. And talks about the pitch of the note, right, that a stringed instrument makes. Depends on some things. And then it says, highest notes are produced by shorter, lighter, or tighter strings. Highest notes produced by shorter strings. 
Hmm. Well, I would think that the highest note, and I probably wouldn't even put the S in there if that were the case, would be produced by the shortest strings. This is an underlined, correct? So the air must be over here. What we're dealing with is not the superlative highest, it's not the single highest string, but rather they're trying to say strings that are higher than the others, right? And that matches up with this shorter, right? So not highest, but higher. And we can look at this in two ways. We can see this as an air in parallelism, or we can see it as a comparative versus superlative. Okay, so what's our answer here? C. One more question from these pages, and that's number 28. Noel and Natalie argued about the painting. Finally, Noel decided that she was right. Well, this could cause a little confusion, right? Because many students are going to think that since Noel decided she was right, Noel thinks that Noel is the one who is right. But on the SAT, that is not good enough. Whenever we have two people mentioned and of the same gender, simply inserting a pronoun to replace one of those people does not fit. Because theoretically, you know, Noel could have decided that Noel was right, but hey, maybe she's a nice person and she said, you know, Natalie, you're right. So we need to clarify this by fixing the ambiguous pronoun she and replacing it either with Noel or Natalie, right? Or possibly that she herself was right. So what do we have here? We have an ambiguous pronoun. And we're gonna get a lot more into these later on, but it's something that I mentioned again the first day, and I told you we always need to test our verbs and pronouns, right? And out of the things we had today here, right? How many of them involved pronouns or verbs? This one, right? This one, and this one. Three out of the five, 60%, which is pretty close to what's gonna happen on the real test, involved issues of verbs or pronouns. All right, now let's go to the other pages we had for homework, right? And that's gonna be on page 338 of the same book. Questions numbers, questions numbers four, five, and six. All right, so now we're on page 338 of the same book. And the first question, the postman assured his customers that neither sleet nor snow were the cause. Well, this is exactly something that I talked about yesterday with either or, neither nor, right? So here we have neither of these individual entities, sleet and snow, right? Neither were the cause no, neither was the cause, correct? Calls for a singular verb to match up with this tricky but singular subject, right? So what we'd rather have here, what we need to have is was, and we have another SVA subject verb agreement error. All right, numbers five and six, a little trickier maybe, and it's going to be something that I'm going to use to launch into our next topic today, okay? What the topic that gets discussed on these next two questions. So number five, sports journalists have debated whether it is a more strenuous task to box for 10 rounds or running a marathon. Well, the issue here is what we call parallel structure or parallelism. And a good way to know that you're looking for parallelism, and again, I'm gonna abbreviate this with two parallel lines, is a conjunction or a comma, okay? Or a series of commas. Now, the things that are connected on either side here need to match up, okay? Here, we have to box in an infinitive form of a verb. Here, we have running, right? 